Okay. Yeah. So welcome back. Hope you guys had a good lunch. Um, I would like to introduce Kim Drachek with um, Art That Changes the World. Um, I have some notes here, so I'll be looking down. Um, uh, so I'm the outreach coordinator for Seen Energy Project, and uh, it's a, we're a grassroots organization, um, and we work to stop um, shale gas development, which is fracking and fracking infrastructure, um, just in New York State. Um, so I got into this work after being active with Occupy Wall Street. Um, and I started the People's Puppets with a number of artists and theater folks who are active in the movement to social and economic justice. And I grew up in Pennsylvania, and a long time ago I had heard about um, some dark stuff going on out in the western part of the state with um, gas infrastructure and people's faucets getting set on fire and things like that with fracking. And, uh, and then when I got involved in Occupy, I heard about this New York, New Jersey expansion project, which is um, an extension of a large gas network that's going up and down the East Coast. And they decided to build a Spectra, Spectra extension into Manhattan in the West Village. Um, it goes through Staten Island and then Jersey City and then under the river into, uh, into Manhattan. Um, so it was sort of like a big awakening for me to get reawakened into activism. I was an animal rights and uh, political um, justice activist when I was younger. And then I started working in the fashion industry. I went to art school and got into fashion and worked in fashion for like 10 years and sort of fell asleep. And when Occupy came around, it sort of reawakened some things in me. Um, so the learning curve of getting involved in this fight against the Spectre Pipeline in New York was huge. It's like I learned about things like Michael Bloomberg pushing the city of New York to convert all of our boilers to natural gas, um, to create a market for this gas that he was bringing in um, because he had personal investments in it. Um, and uh, I just realized like how big this whole industry is, um, tying every issue from pain and war to private profit. And uh, so making art in a studio with other like minds of folks that I met in Occupy, uh, we are, our studios in Dembo, um, uh, we're all fighting for social and political justice. It was like a huge game changer for me. So making art to actually help change the world was absolutely like the right thing to do for me. Um, so how I broke down this discussion is uh, one, art as communication, two, art to start a conversation, and three, art as a narrative. And why these three things will help to shape the world that we want to make possible, so that we know it's possible. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, the communication. So this is taking, communication is my taking my art into the street and telling the story. So this story here is uh, the story of the Hind Horse and the Bound families. Um, and they live directly across the street from fracking infrastructure. Um, the the Hind Horse live across the street from Cove Point's liquefied natural gas port in Cove Point, Maryland. And uh, the Bound family over here lives across from the Mini Sink Compressor Station in Mini Sink, New York. Um, so just to give you some background on what this gas infrastructure actually is. LNG ports are giant refrigeration ships holding fracked gas that's been frozen to negative 260 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which creates the gas to become a liquid. Um, it's highly volatile at that point and serves to load onto ships to take to foreign markets, uh, destroying all of our natural resources for private investment. The compressor station is a point in a gas pipeline that compresses the gas to shoot it down the pipeline to the next compressor station. Um, and it just goes down the chain to compressor station. So these two infrastructure pieces, um, of, they're part of the fracking system. Um, they're devastating on our health and all life that live near them. Um, and we'll get into more detail about that later. But um, so now we'll go into more art, more stories. 
Um, here's work that the uh, people's <coughs> puppets did for the March Against Monsanto. Um, you can see how this changes the Agora. Um, having a clear message delivered, so we made these banners that are all made in beans. So all the, all the letters are different beans. Um, and uh, it's a food that's being disrupted by Monsanto on banners with monarch butterflies and bees that are also being disrupted by Monsanto, which is a, a company that's working for genetic modification of all of our food for corporate control. So, uh, don't shoot. This is a simple message that packs a punch. You know exactly what it means. Uh, it's an issue of liberty and justice for the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. Um, here we made clear typeface um, banners that you could see through. And behind them, we made dozens and dozens and dozens of, of body outlines of all the victims of police violence um, in the city of, uh, all over the world. So each, each, each victim of police violence had its own body and its own name. So it just changed the image of what this march was looking like. So, you see with this crowd, we have, you know, a bunch of people hanging out, um, and crowds are great, we love people, but if you pop in Lady Liberty to that crowd, it changes what the crowd looks like, what the crowd is there for, what the crowd is doing. So these people are, re are gathered for a reason of justice and liberty. Um, this is the Occupy Wall Street Lady Liberty on her first outing before we even came to her. Um, here is a crowd gathering again in the Agora to come together around our maypole with a theme of all of our grievances are connected. We can play, we can look, we can talk, or be in a crowd. And again, that's great, it's not a bad thing, but how much more fruitful is it with the art? Here's our lovely friend Claire Leibowitz playing with one of the ribbons. So each of the ribbons had a different uh, grievance of our society that doesn't help us to elevate, which is what a lot of the Occupy movement was about, multi-issue. Um, so here is um, our friend playing with one of our debt monster puppets. Or he's just a dude hanging out in a park. Mm -hmm. um, so all of this artwork leads us to what is important about this work. Um, you get to start a conversation. So, you know, we have this debt monster in the park. People get curious about it. They come up and they talk. We just happened to have this newscaster come up and start chit-chatting with us. And we got to talk to her about the debt crisis in our country and how, you know, it's a, it's a phony institution that's created by bankers to keep us all in debt. And we actually began to, like, have a great conversation based on this, like, cardboard that we sourced from the garbage and made this thing called a debt monster out of. Um, here's our friend Claire. Again, she was holding that ribbon in the maypole. So she, she was arrested in um, Occupy Wall Street. And the, when she was arrested uh, for legally protesting and exercising her First Amendment, she was taken to uh, to jail down to the tombs at 100 Center Street, and they uh, scanned her, they attempted to scan her retina. And because she knew that it wasn't mandatory to have her retina scanned, it was an option, they kept her in jail for like two days. And so she decided to make a huge deal out of it and take the city of New York to, to court um, because what they were, they were detaining her illegally. So we, for her court date, um, the People's Puppets made a giant eyeball, which, you know, as she's coming out, all these news reporters are always hanging around the, the court steps. So they decided, what is this for? And we were able to start the conversation with them and tell them what happened. Um, here's my partner, Eric, who's in the back over here, with our Lady Liberty puppet. And everywhere we would take this puppet, little kids <laughs> would be coming up to us like, oh, can we take a picture? Like, 
even the police would come up and say, can I take a picture with the puppet? My, my kids see this puppet all over social media and stuff. We'd be like, yeah, sure, you know? It was like in a major de-escalation moment. And, um, you know, like we would, we would stand in the park and t we would, down at Zuccotti is really near like Trinity Church and World Trade Center and all, you know, all these tourist locations. So there'd be tourists walking by they see this Lady Liberty puppet, and kids would be like, oh, like, let me come over and talk to you. The parents would be like, oh, what are you here for? We're like, oh, we're Occupy Wall Street. And they'd be like, <coughs> you know, really, really scared. But then they would see that we're like great people. Like, we're, we like are caring for their children. We're open and expressive, willing to have a conversation. And that wouldn't have happened if we were just standing there. Like, the art draws people in, you know? <coughs> So we work with several groups who um, come into our studio and help us build their actions. Um, and this is a, a group of amazing kids called the Newark Student Union. Um, and they're fighting to preserve their school, their high school, from getting pri privatized. And uh, they came in and they explained uh, how Governor Christie is working in cahoots with their uh, superintendent named Cammie Anderson. Um, to standardize Newark, they're using Newark um, as a testing ground for how they can sort of like privatize and standardize all the high schools across the nation. And this totally is taking away from their culture, their personality, their curiosity, and their desire. And, and these are the things that we should be <coughs> celebrating and cultivating in our youth to grow, you know, healthy, functioning adults in a society that is a good society to, to live in. Um, so we help them build all these props. We built like a Governor Christie like bobblehead that you would wear. And uh, what was wonderful about this is uh, they got they got a big story written about them in Rolling Stone. This just came out a few weeks ago. Um, and so you know people are reading about this stuff now. You know we like helped to make their action visual <laughs> and give a story where. If people were walking around with a bunch of cardboard signs, it may have changed what their action looked like. So bringing the art to any sort of like action is, is, is a good communication tool. Um, this is a, a really interesting story. These folks, I um, can't remember how we met them. Um, they came into our studio and they explained their story. They are children of Caribbean immigrants. So their parents were brought here to teach in schools, part of this like teaching program, like, oh, we're gonna, you know, like provide you with uh, a job as a teacher because we wanna like diversify our teachers in the United States. So they bring their families over here, they live, they, they work, they teach, and um, when their children turn 21, they grew up as American kids. They, all their friends here, you know, their hopes and dreams are here, their life is here. The, um, the United States is saying, well, once you turn 21, you have to get out because you are no longer legal here. So we helped them make a, a contestoria, which you'll learn a little bit more about later. I brought a contestoria here. So we stood in Bryant Park at lunch hour and we went through their story about how they're aging out, and like this is a big phrase that, that's been used. We gave them a, 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 a <coughs> clock. We, we actually worked with them to build this, so now they have the art skills to go to share with their friends and their colleagues. And we got a lot of petition signed. We talked to a lot of people that day who learned about this that were like, no way, that's really going on. And the, and the, the really bad part of the story is the, the children that would come from Switzerland and the United Kingdom got their green cards. So this is clearly a story of racism, and we helped them to expose that. And so, you know, they got a story on NPR, and got a story in the New York Times. And this is really, really wonderful, and they're hopefully going to get to stay and get their green card because of their actions. So not only do we help to deliver messages outward to the public, but we believe that working on art together helps to build community and build connections.
So then we talk about the narrative, art is narrative. So we talked about communication, conversation, and now let's talk about building the narrative, like how art can help you do that. We don't even need any words to tell you what's going on in this picture here. Um, you know, student debt crunching kids. And we took this out to Governor's Island during the weekend of Figment. And everything that's in here is just, uh, we just blew up some garbage bags. So They're like balloons. So it was really light. But the kids loved playing with it. You know, it's like everybody's like, oh, I get to get run over now. I, it's my turn. It's my turn. But what an amazing visual that made. And like all the parents were like, that is brilliant. That is so brilliant. You know, it was like a toy, but you know, it was like it just worked out really well. Um, so these are ways to like use your art. You know, you guys are here at Pratt, and I know not all of you are students here, but you're all here in this room, so you're interested in art. You can use your creative skills to help tell a story, whatever story it is that's yours. These are. Um, Farmers from Immokalee, Florida. This is where most of our tomatoes come from. So they are working really hard. They've been trying to get every supermarket and fast food store um, to sign on to the Fair Food Agreement. And the Fair Food Agreement is helping to bring uh, rights to the workers, like health care. And one of their one asks is that these, that these uh, buyers pay one penny more per pound of, every, of tomatoes. So that will help to raise their rates. One penny a pound. And Wendy's Trader Joe's has signed on. McDonald's, of all people, have signed on. But um, Wendy's is a holdout. So there's like a big heated uh, movement towards Wendy's to really pressure Wendy's to sign this fair food agreement. So uh, we helped them build this like giant Wendy's thing. And, they, they actually built this narrative that, that the icon of Wendy signed the Fair Food Agreement in the middle of Union Square. It was, it was really great. Another narrative, um, 2013, Congress decided to pat, like, a sequester, threaten a sequester, taking away public, um, public uh, services. So what we did is uh, we made a giant twister game. So we would take it, we would take a giant, this giant twister game into, into public squares and we would play a game of twister called sequester. And what would happen were people would spin it and everybody would put their hands on the dots and then in the middle of the game, a, 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 like a hooded creature would come through and tear the playing board in half. So people had to decide, do I, do I get out of the game? Am I going to, um, can I share my dot with my neighbor? Or am I going to topple over and just lose? So these were like real time narrative situations that we put people in to make decisions on like what would they do if they lost their service? What would they do if they lost their spot in life? Would they share? Would they die? Would they revolt? Would they go try to steal the, the other half of the sequester game back from the hooded figure? So every game was different, but it was a lot of fun. And it created a ton of conversation. So this is sort of starting to get more into the environmental work that I do. Um, there's an agency called FERC down in Washington, D.C., the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They work hand in hand with the natural gas industry, which is what my organization works to fight is uh, natural gas infrastructure and push for renewable energy, um, decentralized uh, efficiency, um, you know, power, put the, putting the power back in people's hands. Um, so we built a giant monopoly man puppet to, to represent the, the gas industry. And we wrote a song based on the Beatles song, um, Yellow Submarine, saying that we all know FERC is a rubber stamp machine. Because every, um, every gas company, pipeline company that comes to FERC will, needs to get a stamp of approval for their project. So FERC is constantly like, yeah, sure, like whatever you want, whatever you want, because they get paid per approval that they do. So trying to explain this to people is really complicated and doesn't make any sense. So we bring this art so we can explain, yes, okay, you can kind of see, you kind of, people, most people understand the yellow submarine, you know, visuals. 
pe most people understand what Monopoly Man is, and it sort of helps you sculpt that story on what's going on here, and then encourages you to ask questions like, why, why is Monopoly Man next to FERC? Well, let, let's have a conversation about that, right? It opens, it opens up the possibilities. So we also, we have a fracked gas pipeline coming up Flatbush Avenue called the Rockaway Pipeline. And when the Rockaway Pipeline was actually part of it, they put it together in segments and sections, but when part of it was going into the earth there, um, we decided to make our own street signs and take them out onto Flatbush Avenue to tell people what was going on. Now, this was sort of beach weather, so a lot of, there was a lot of traffic and a lot of people stopped, so we would go and hand out flyers to them. Did you know what fracked gas is? Do you know what fracking is? Like, here's really quick and dirty information about it. And people would be like, what? I thought that was like a water pipe. Why would they be putting a gas pipe in the only evacuation route out of the Rockaways, which, you know, we all just got over Hurricane Sandy, when some people are still dealing with the after effects of Sandy. So, they know what it's like trying to get out of the Rockaways during an emergency. Why are they putting a gas pipeline there? So we got to actually talk to them about a deeper issue, just like in their cars while they're like in traffic at a traffic light. And then the news came, and that was really good. <coughs> this was our version of caution tape, the um, Spectre pipeline, which is how I originally got into this work. Um, fighting a fracked gas pipeline coming into New York City on the west side. Um, we worked really hard to try to get this to stop. Uh, FERC approved it, um, and it went through our public park, the Hudson River Park, which is that really nice bicycle area down the west side of Manhattan, um, because Mayor Bloomberg's girlfriend sits on the board of the park, so they granted an easement to the, the gas company. And it just so happens, on, on, so over here is Hudson River. So we decided we we're gonna shut the West Side Highway down with caution tape because we need to like alert people on what's going on. Um, it was fun, we all got arrested, but it was totally <laughs> worth it. Um, <laughs> um, and right over here is the new Whitney Museum of American <coughs> Art. So they are moving from their, their uptown location down to the, the meat packing district, this cool, funky, hip, like, you know, really overly priced and crazy um, neighborhood right by the High Line. So the, the vault of the Spectre pipeline, um, which is where it, the gas from the Spectre Energy Network will connect to the Con Edison work, network, happens to be built into the basement of the, of the new Whitney Museum of American Art. So we're right now, we're building this campaign to just alert people on what's going on and engage the Whitney into having a public dialogue with all of us and alert, maybe the investors might want to know that there's an explosive radioactive pipeline under their billions dollars investments of art. So um, we're not going to be disruptive, but we're going to try to encourage a conversation. If any, if the, if the museum opens May 1st, if any of you guys are interested in working on that campaign with us, let me know. Um, it'll be very interesting. We also do, for the last three years, we've been trying to alert the public to what's going on. So we do um, a walk a, a, a walk every year. Um, the Municipal Art Society grants the public any uh, one weekend a month, or one weekend a year, usually the first weekend in May, to create your own walking tour, like show us your New York, like what are you interested in? So a lot of people have all different kinds of walking tours. Um, we happen to be really interested in fracking infrastructure, so we decided, and we're all artists and theater people, um, so we decided to develop a walking tour called The Secrets of Death Avenue. Um, the walking tour is by the Municipal Art Society is called Jane's Walk. So it's named after Jane Jacobs, who, um, does anybody know who Jane Jacobs is in this room? Oh, good, yes. She was amazing. So she was an, an activist and a writer. Um, she lived in the West Village. She really helped to develop um, 
uh, a better urban environment for city dwellers. She was an activist. She really, she actually fought Robert Moses, which was the big highway guy in the U.S. Uh, he wanted to build uh, the Lower Manhattan Expressway, which would have wiped out Washington Square Park. And she fought him. She built a campaign. And clearly she won because we still have Washington Square Park, thank God. Um, but so this tour, this Jane's Walk that the Municipal Art Society puts on is in the spirit of Jane Jacobs. So uh, what we have here, we have like different stages of the walking tour. So it starts out by the Apple Store on 9th and 14th. And we, um, we talk about just the history of the West Village a little bit. And then um, back before the High Line used to be elevated, it was actually a train that would run along 10th Avenue. And the train would consistently strike and kill pedestrians. So the city of New York decided, I have a great idea. Let's get cowboys on horses <laughs> to protect the pedestrians. So they hired cowboys on horses to go and protect, protect pedestrians. So we have like a whole scene with like, we, get, we have all these like beautiful women with cowboy hats and we put like horses on bicycles and her, like cardboard horse heads on bicycles. And we like, you know, like sort of entertain the people on the walking tour. And then we um, walk down towards uh, the Whitney and we talk about why 10th Avenue is still considered Death Avenue because of the Spectre Pipeline. So, um, and then here we have um, our friend Monica and our friend Brad. Um, they're amazing actors. They, they, they have this like boxing match between Jane Jacobs and Robert Moses. And, and it just pulls in like tons of people. Everybody's like, what's going on over there? It's really funny and really cool. Um, and here's a picture of me dressed up as a Roy Lichtenstein painting, talking about M Michael Bloomberg and, and his connection to the Spectre Pipeline. And then we talk about, we bring all these different works of art that are in Whitney's permanent collection um, to life. And they give a short monologue about the, the Whitney and how they're endangered species now because the Spectre Pipeline lurks underneath, you know, their home. And... Um, it's a, it's a blast. We're doing it again this May 2nd and 3rd, and uh, the, the Whitney opens on May 1st, so there's going to be a lot of new surprises this year for it. So to talk again about fracking infrastructure, this is a real-time issue that's going on now that we are working to stop. Um, the liquefied natural gas port called Port Ambrose is being proposed off the coast of the Rockaways, Long Beach, Jones Beach, Fire Island. This is a, a company called Liberty Natural Gas, and they, in 2011, had applied to build this uh, natural gas port. Uh, it would be the size of, say, like the Empire State Building lay that on its side and go up about 12 to 13 stories. So that's the size we're talking about here. LNG is, as we talked about in the beginning, it's uh, fracked gas that's frozen to 260 degrees negative Fahrenheit and turns into a liquid. And that is just stored out in these like shipping containers, uh, those three round, that's sort of my illustration of what an LNG terminal looks like. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's the it's stored in these giant balls on this on this uh, port this marine port and it's being proposed it's about 19 miles or so off the coast of our beach it just so happens it's in exactly the same spot as an offshore wind farm proposal yeah it's like right now we have this real-time choice in New York City about how we are going to proceed and build our future so we sort of won a, a little bit. We're, we're getting there. We're, we need Governor Cuomo to veto this project. We've been talking to people all along the coastlines. We've gotten the Long Beach City Council to unanimously write a letter to go, agree to write a letter to Governor Cuomo to veto this project. We have a hearing coming up on Wednesday with the New York City Council um, to write a letter to Governor Cuomo to veto this project. Um, and what would be so awful about this is if the LNG port gets built, there's no potential for us to build this offshore wind farm because there is 
very little land that you can actually build something on in that part of the ocean. We have shipping lanes there. Um, and then there's also really deep trenches. So the, the actual land is shallow enough to build something. Um, so we're working on that. Um, this is some of the folks that I've been working with. Uh, the kids out in Long Beach, they <laughs> love their beach. So what I can bring is I know that I can bring storytelling through art to them, right? So they developed, this, is, this was on their own, they developed a Save the Mermaids campaign. They love mermaids. So they decided to start this whole thing and, and make, lawn, make lawn fences. They, everybody has grass green yards out there. So they decided to make fen, uh, like signs, like lawn signs, like politicians do, and put these all over Long Beach. And uh, they're, they're, they're brilliant kids. So um, Contastoria is um, one of my personal favorite types of art to help to tell a complicated narrative. Uh, Contastoria in <coughs> Italian means sung story. It, Contastoria dates back to uh, like the fourth century in India is who originally developed Contastoria. Um, so, uh, I have a contest story that I'm going to present to you today, because it's kind of fun. Um, and, uh, and then we could either do some Q&A and discussion, or if you guys want to learn how to build a contest story, we could do that too. So, just to, to finish up, this was a Monopoly Man. We took him into Times Square on election night. When, Obama and Mitt Romney were running against each other. And we would constantly stop and be like, hey, Mr. Monopoly Man, who's winning the election tonight? And he'd be like, you know, it doesn't matter. Goldman Sachs is winning, you know. And like all these news cameras from all over the place would like come over. We got on like Fox News with this. It was, it was pretty, pretty, that was like probably our, our most spectacular night. It was a really good narrative that we built for the middle of Times Square on election night. And then just imagine if there was no art. You know, there would be no conversation. There would be lots of ads telling you to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, if you're interested in the environmental side of some of the work that I'm doing, um, I work for Sane Energy Project. Uh, we're a very tiny grassroots group that we're stopping, trying to stop shale gas infrastructure, and I think we're going to do it. We got at least a ban on drilling here in New York, which is a big success. So you can write to me anytime. Here's my email address. I have cards up here as well. Or if you want to participate in some creative mischief with me, uh, our puppet studio is just in Dumbo uh, at 20J Street. And uh, this is what our studio looks like when we're during, during a massive build. And there's lots of really good people. We meet in there Monday and Thursday nights. We're going to actually be building, starting on Monday, uh, a giant LNG tanker to take up to Governor Cuomo's office to encourage him to realize that we don't want the LNG proposal approved. So this is how I'm working with... Uh, art and activism and how I choose to change the world. So, and that's it. So, my partner Eric and I are going to perform a contestoria for you. I have a quick question. Just, yeah. Why is it that, that um, off the rockway is 19 miles off the shore? Mm -hmm. The same proposal there is an LNG and a water Why is it that location only? Mm -hmm. uh, because there is a there's a specific plot of land there that is shallow enough to actually build something on, and the other plots of land are there for our shipping lanes to bring goods into the city, and and then there's like very deep trenches. So you can't build anything there. So it's really like the decision that we're going to make between 